Hey, hello there and welcome to Talking with Tony. I'm your host, Tony Jones, and today we welcome a big part of the Noonan High Wrestling Program here. We're going to welcome coaches John Garner and Sean Haig. Sean Haig is one of the greatest wrestlers ever to compete in Georgia, and Coach Garner is pretty awesome in his own right, and he's had some wonderful ideas. We'll talk to them about some team unity building that they've done. We're going to talk to them about some returners that we've got coming back, and We'll sort of recap some of what happened last year as well. So don't go anywhere. I'll be joined by the Noonan Wrestling Coaches on Talking with Tony right after this. Get your fixer upper fix on HGTV. Pow! <laughs> Every Tuesday. Reporting for duty. Chip and Joanna make dreams come true. It's gonna look awesome. OMG! With more challenges. Ah! More surprises. Are y'all ready to see your fixer upper? <laughs> More chip. <laughs> oh. I think it's always fun to shake it up a little bit. Amen. Fixer Upper, Tuesday night at 9, only on HGTV. Welcome back to Talking with Tony. As I mentioned in my opening, wrestling season, and it's great to have the staff in the Noonan Cougars, part of the staff. We'll get into that as well. Sean Haig and John Garth. Guys, thanks a lot for coming in here and doing the show. We thanks appreciate having us. having us. Yeah, your second appearance on Talking with Tony. You yes, hit sir. it out of the park uh, <laughs> last, last time, so no pressure. I hope you can, uh, can, can re repeat that. Does it seem right to you guys? You guys live for wrestling, and of course, for me, I'm like, man, it's wrestling season already, but y'all probably don't feel that way. You're probably ready for it, aren't you? I'm ready for it, but, I, you know, it's too warm right now. It's mm. supposed to be cold and dark. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's unseasonably warm. <laughs> How about you? Are you in you full force? You ready to go? I think we've been full force since the beginning of school. <laughs> now, it's, uh, that's, that's been a few months, I guess, to get ready, get prepared. Yeah. When school starts, do you find yourself uh, walking the halls and looking for any transfers? Like, <laughs> hmm, I wonder if this guy is about 170 or so. I do, do a lot of recruiting at ISS there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a common thing. Look, you got a lot of kids back on this team, and we'll, we'll talk about some of them. But I first got to talk about a guy that, uh, that won't be here that really made his uh, mark on Noonan High Wrestling. Uh, a little bit of a, a roller coaster career. Man, did he finish it off great with a, with a state runner-up uh, finish. I'm talking about Jason Moore. Uh, there, there really is no replacing Jason Moore. I mean, uh, as a leader, as a, an example, as a teammate, uh, great kid. You know, couldn't say enough good things about him. Uh, it was very easy to, to help him get recruited because, you know, you're not having to make something up to, to talk about him. Uh, hard worker and uh, just all around wonderful person. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was thinking this would be a kid that could place at state last year. I didn't, I didn't expect state runner up and all. What, what, what were both of y'all's feelings on that? I knew he was capable of it. Uh, <clears throat> again, as I, you and I were talking about earlier, there's so many factors that had to be, mm -hmm. you know, working correctly and in the, in the positive manner. Uh, and everything was good for him that day. He was, he was healthy, no injuries. He wasn't sick. He, mm -hmm. you know, um, he cut his weight right. He was focused. It, it just, everything came together. When he was very, he was very coachable. The mm -hmm. kid that he had lost to, true. what, three times going into sectionals? The Lee County. Um, I mean, we specifically drove all the way down to Tiff County one weekend, and that's a long ride. But <laughs> we went down and, uh, and we made sure, they were actually in two different weight classes at that time, and we made sure we got with the other coach and they actually bumped their kid up just to see Jason again because they had seen each other the year before. And uh, we went down there and Jason wrestled him at Tift and, uh, and lost, I think it was 5-3. Mm -hmm. And then we, uh, we sat down, we, we talked about the kid's strategy, we talked mm -hmm. about the different things that he needed to do to be successful, and he applied those to sectionals. I mean, so many times you get great athletes that aren't coachable. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Jason absolutely was, and I think that's, that's one of the keys to his, to his success. So you watch that or maybe even film that sort of you know, saying about it's hard to beat a good basketball team three times in one season. He had lost to this, but then visually you were able to see that and see some areas that maybe Jason could attack then. Yeah, yeah, it was, um, that, that's the great thing about our, our core group of parents is they film just about every single match and we're actually going one step further this year and we've got some technology that we're going to be using to, to help us out with that. But yeah, we uh, look back at the match and in between the two of us and the other coaches jumping up and down, you can see how great of a match it was. And uh, yeah, just utilize the, the film to go back and fix the, the little issues. Four seasons in now, it's hard for me to believe. I mean, I haven't even thought like, is it three or is it four? It's three, no, it's four. Right. 
Is the program where you visualized it being? Are you ahead of it a little bit? Are you behind it a little bit? Or is it about where you thought? Um, like I said uh, when we were talking earlier, I, I'm not sure where I thought we were going to be. It's, it's hard to believe that it's been four years mm -hmm. uh, that we've started. Um, we've changed the mentality. We've, we've changed the, the type of kid that's coming out for the program. Um, our parents know what to expect. Mm -hmm. Our coaches work well together. We've kind of figured out what our strengths are, what our weaknesses, and you know, we pick each other's slack up. Uh, it, it's been made easier with the fact that my father's a Hall of Fame coach, mm -hmm. you know, and he's the person I call every night after practice, uh, you know, after a tournament when, when I'm frustrated or, mm -hmm. or not sure if things went the way I wanted them to. Um, He's a wonderful resource to talk to and, uh, you know, kind of talks you off the ledge to, mm -hmm. to get you back where your, your mind should be. Sometimes you need that, though. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I mean that's, uh, that's, that's part of This sport can be very rewarding, but I get both of your thoughts on this. You know, it's, it's, it can be very humbling as well. Yeah, it absolutely can. Just sit and listen to, to Sean, you know, all the, all the success that he had and uh, listen to his dad. I mean, I've, I've learned a ton. I mean, there's... There's a reason why I do make that one hour commute one way every single day. It's just, uh, you know, you become a better coach by surrounding yourself by people that know and are better than you. So, uh, um, I mean, there's been times that uh, I actually asked him back early in the season. I was like, hey, would you mind if I get your dad's number? And uh, there's, I mean, there's times I give him a call mm, and great. just uh, just kind of bounce ideas off e off each other. And um, definitely a great resource. That one hour commute that he has, uh, that's not going home at 3.30 in the afternoon. When it's wrestling, you don't have wrestling practice at one o'clock in the afternoon and then get to go home. That's a real commitment. Yes, sir. Uh, he's some leaving sometimes at 7.30 at night, not getting home till 8.39. Um, so it, it gives him a time to kind of get centered again before he walks into his house, but mm. it also gives him a lot of time to call people and make sure things are the way he wants them to be by the time, time for, he gets there. Time for mama calls. <laughs> and let's, but let's be honest, sometimes that can be uh, blow off some steam after a frustrating day at practice. Not every practice goes the way you want it to go. Some are, I'm no awesome, but sometimes you think like, well, I didn't get the most I wanted to get out of the kids in that practice, and so maybe you can, you know, go over your mind and all about that. And that, that can be <laughs> effective as well. Yeah, it's uh it definitely gives us the time to reflect. I mean, I, we spend more time on the phone <laughs> in the morning and on my way home just talking about that, that exact same thing. I mean, we pretty much, uh, uh, it's, our, it's our planning period, I guess. We sat down and, uh, um, and kind of figure out what we want from, from the kids. And kind of taking it a step further, one of the things that we're doing more of this year is individualized instruction as well. Taking those kids, because not every kid's going to be able to hit the same type of move, whether it's you know, your 106 pound or your 285. Everybody's got different strengths, mm -hmm. different backgrounds, and uh, and we kind of take that time to 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 analyze what we need to do as a coaching staff. You guys are just a third of that coaching staff, if I'm if I'm right, if I'm remembering right. Yeah. There's the Morgans, yes sir, Tim Johnson, yes sir, and Bruce. You get ahead with Nigers. How do we say Burgess. his last name? Okay, <laughs> okay. First of all, let's just get to Bruce. Okay, <laughs> Bruce is the most intense person I've ever met. <laughs> You know how sometimes you want to have a little bit of like space in between you and a person, you know, a little personal space. Bruce is unaware of all of that. I don't know what well, everybody's like from Ohio, but uh, you know, Bruce is going to be like, you know, in your face. He's a great guy, though, a wonderful guy, but he is intense. He's, he's an encyclopedia of wrestling. Yes, he is. You know, if you you better be ready for a ten minute answer because he's got he's got a story and everything else that goes with it. Is he already nervous about the Ohio State Michigan game, a football game? Oh, this God, this if year? I hear about Ohio State from him one more time. <laughs> I bet I guess he was humbled with their uh, with their earlier defeat, yeah. but but uh, yeah, I'm sure that he he's uh, fired up. But the the also former uh, wrestler in the county uh, won a state championship at East Coweta. Tim mm -hmm. Johnson, as part of the staff, tell us a little bit about Tim and his input with the team. Well, Tim Tim's got comes with a lot of energy. Uh, he is also um, a vast knowledge of wrestling, mm -hmm. and it's all of us all wrestle differently. You know, as a wrestling coach, you never truly retire from competing. You you're still getting <laughs> on the mat. Um, Our bodies tell us that every day. <laughs> <laughs> Tim's technique is, is vastly different than most of ours, and he knows it very, very well. Um, he's matured a lot as a coach. Uh, he's worked with our, uh, our former junior program with the Cobras that we've now changed into the Cougars um, and had tremendous success with that. Uh, was really excited about working with the high school kids, and so we brought him up this year uh, to work with the JV. And uh, I'm really excited to see what he's going to do with those guys. I like the fact that uh, you had the success that you had. 
Yes, Tim won a state championship, but he can't exactly like, uh, you know, talk about accomplishments in front of you because that's impressive, but it's not like what you were able to pull off. So I like the fact that sometimes Tim can be, and I love Tim, Tim would be like, yeah, I'm the man. Well, not on this staff, you know, <laughs> you know you're not. You're very good, though, but, I, but I'll give you that. That that kid, I tell you what, uh, county is so important. I think county this year is December 16th, if, if I remember. Yeah. We want people to come out mm -hmm. and yes, support us because it's a lot of electricity in the air. You know? Oh, yeah. And it's special when we have a kid that can win four. And because you, if you win four, you have to win your ninth grade year. Yep. And that may mean that you have to go up against a junior or a senior to, to pull that off. Tim's one of the finest wrestlers to come out of the county. Tim doesn't have those four titles. He had to go up against a guy named Brandon Veazey at Northgate. And Brandon Veazey ended up with the four titles. So that was just, you know, a tough draw for him and all. So it's sort of a shame that one of our elite wrestlers from the area who has a state championship doesn't have those four county titles. But I hope that po uh, folks will come out. Who's hosting this year the county championships? East Coweta. East Coweta. East Coweta. East Coweta. Yes, sir. Now, look, there's other matches, and there's other matches before then. But kids, got to admit, kids talk about county oh, yeah. all year round, oh, right? Yeah. yeah, that's the one they want to win. I don't know if you still get the T-shirt for winning. You used to get the T-shirt, and everybody wanted that. They said, like, I don't know. Who was it? It was a kid from North Cape said, you know, it's nice to like be a winner part of the team. And it's nice to be recognized the first place in the paper, but it's that t-shirt because yeah. I wear it over there at East Coweta <laughs> and I wear it over there to the other school to let them know that I've got the, you the know, county champion. but that's how they feel. It's the county championship. Yeah, it's absolutely. like facing, facing the arch rivals and it's a cool thing. It's a round robin deal. Everybody gets to wrestle everybody. Sometimes we've had some splits. It's come down to like most pins or whatever the tie breaking deal would be. So you never know what you know, you might get. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about uh, real quick the other assistant uh, coaches, though, the, the, the Morgans. And look, Jim Morgan, I mean, look, this guy has been involved with Noonan Wrestling forever. God, yeah, he's going on, what, 40 years now? I mean, yeah. Either as a competitor or as a coach. Mm -hmm. What, I call him the legend that day? <laughs> <laughs> Can I pick up on that and steal that the next time I see him? Can sure, I call him the absolutely. legend and all? And, uh, he, he, but he's a lot of knowledge in his own right. He's very giving of his time. He I mean, is. Absolutely. And, and, and Brian is, is similar in the same way. And uh, I'm assuming Brian also uh, is part of the, of the chaplain part of, of the process. Now, a great combination you got there. Well, uh, Brian has, has really uh, stepped up with MCA wrestling mm -hmm. um, and has provided us a lot of, of, uh, a lot of support with our uh, wrestlers during the summer. Um, we have 12 to 15 that will go to the FCA wrestling camp, which is a wonderful camp. Mm -hmm. Tom Ryan, who was the NCAA uh, Division I you know, mm -hmm. winning coach last year, Mm -hmm. he was, he's at this and kids are able to work with him and I mean, he's, he's coming down to Georgia for this thing mm -hmm. and uh, Brian's uh, just instituted you know we talked a lot about our captains and, and leaders and, and what kind of leader Jason Moore was and you know we got lucky you know I hit the lottery with that kid because you know he didn't need to be trained to be a good leader he just mm -hmm. he, he, it just was natural and uh, so Brian has instituted a, uh, a leadership uh, program that we're working through with uh, about 15 of our kids right now and so, you know, from freshmen all through the seniors so that we, we have the leaders to rely on. They have those skills. We're, we're building the kind of leaders that we would like, you know, and, and it also is good for the kids as they move forward. There, there's those skills that they have as they move into college, even if they don't continue to compete in, in whatever sport, you know, moving into a job, uh, there's, there's some big skills. And it's one of the reasons why I love wrestling. Uh, it, it truly just prepares you for life. Uh, for, for the challenges that you face, you know, despite the fact you can't point out what that challenge might be. Um, and that's why I've always loved it. And even though I haven't had the success as a coach uh, that I would want to have, I can, I can point to kids and say, you know, and I, I, I was a part of that success, whatever it happens to be. Sometimes that success can also be away from the mat, and that means actually more than on the mat. And we're going to go to break now, but when we come back, we're going to talk about a great idea that you had in a yes, team building, team unity. And it's uh, a lot of people are talking about it, and it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing. So I can't wait to discuss that. So you guys don't go anywhere, okay? we got more. Yeah. Folks, don't go anywhere. We've got more with the Noonan High Wrestling coaching staff on Talking With Tony right after this. Celebrity judges. Oh, yeah. Two seasoned chefs. Bobby, watch out. Getting the opportunity to go head to head is a dream come true. This is like a mini Iron Chef. What time is it? Game time. But can they beat play? A lot of people want to see you get beat, crushed. Grandma, it's definitely going to be interesting. All new Thursday night at 10. Beat Bobby Flay. On Food Network, dig in.
Hey there, welcome back to Talking with Tony. Uh, our privilege today to be discussing uh, the Noonan wrestling season and what our expectations are. And, but before we get into that, an awesome thing here that I, that I discovered recently, but uh, you guys have been doing for a while is, and this was your idea, so all the credit in the, in the world to you, but both the credit for implementing that. Uh, team unity, a way to like help them grow together, uh, work on a lot of different things, including the mental aspect of thing. You decided to contact all these folks, whether it be Fire Department, National Guard. Uh, tell us about this. So uh, working in the history department like I do, we're all about the you know community involvement. And one of the things that Sean and I were talking about was trying to get the kids, um, whether they're, they're going to college to wrestle or they're, they're going to get a, a local job, we just started noticing in building our alumni association that a lot of our alumni wrestlers are part of the fire department, uh, are part of the police force, or in the military. I mean, we've got a ton of alumni in all of those groups. So we just kind of thought that it would be great to get somebody out from each of the branches, of each branch of the military, um, as well as the police and the firefighters. And it was, it was a hit from day one. I think we had 30 kids out every single day and the kids weren't whining, they weren't complaining. They, they were out doing preseason workouts every Wednesday for what, seven weeks. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, it was phenomenal. It shows a side of maturing side of the kids also to buy into that, doesn't it? Absolutely. Uh, as I've always said, you know, train for wrestling there's there's a lot of uh, clean up my language for that it, it, it stinks there's a, there's a lot of stink to it uh, and mentally just it, it breaks you down you're just doing the same thing over and over there's a lot of redundancy um, to be able to do a tough workout that's different from the week before um, it's exciting it's different it's a challenge um, and the, the type of mentality that we want for wrestling is a guy that, that wants mm -hmm. to challenge or a girl that, that wants to mm -hmm. challenge themselves and uh, by bringing these folks out, you know, it, it was, you know, you would think you could carry a fire hose very easily. But when you throw 70, you know, gallons of water Not into so it, that's, much. you know, 350, 400 mm -hmm. pounds that you're trying to tote around there. It, it makes it different. It gives a, a, a big respect for what they do, and uh, it makes it fun for the kids to try to fight through that workout. Certainly rewarding for them. What about for the firefighters, police? Did you feel like it was very rewarding for yeah, them also? Yeah, I, I got phone calls from each one of them talking about how great it was mm -hmm. to uh, to talk to the kids. And several of the kids were like, Coach, I, I think I may want to do that when I get older. And wow. it kind of gave them that community connection as well, which was which was pretty great. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun to watch. Maybe these guys can come out some. I'm sure they can come to every meet. But maybe these guys can come out and be in the stands and uh, cheer these Cougars on this be, year. Absolutely. But just what he said, you know, just being around them and them having that sort of effect that that's something the career that he might want to do mm -hmm. that wrestle that that speaks volumes yeah, right there absolutely. I mean think about how many lives that you're affecting by doing this that's that, that I can tell you that's that's pretty awesome Congrat congratulations on that you're also setting up an alumni program alumni association with Noonan wrestling yeah it's been a ton of work uh, the program started I think Jim said 1970 Jim Morgan was our first state placer and it was 6970 mm -hmm. somewhere in there and um, I mean, we've got, we went through and did all the research and I think we've got like right at 380 alumni. Wow. Um, so uh, Coach Morgan and Morgan's jewelry, or Morgan's uh, trophy, they're actually working on building us a plaque and we're putting every graduating class on the wall. Oh, yeah. And if you wrestle, you know, freshman, junior, senior year, then we'll put your name and, and those underneath it. But it's, I mean, we've got guys um, out in Arizona, we got a guy in Hawaii, we've got guys all over the country that are, that are jumping at the bit to, to get yes. back involved in the program. You got many here and some of them, like you said, in the police departments or in uh, fire departments. How can uh, they, re if they haven't heard about this, because some, some may see this program and say, how, how can they contact you guys to get involved with that alumni program? So if they email me at john, J-O-H-N dot garner at coweetaschools.net, there's a form I'll send them and they okay. get, get registered and I'll shoot out information um, to let them know when the alumni dates are actually our alumni match is going to be December the 6th this year mm -hmm. and we're going to we're going to recognize the alumni at 5 30 on, on that evening so we're hoping to get as many of our alumni out as we can okay let's talk about some of the uh returners we talked about John that uh, or Jason I'm sorry that be gone but you've got like guys like Devin and Zach back uh these are team Georgia uh wrestlers also uh, Josh and Kale the uh cover's not bare here this is going to be a good season no no the cover's definitely not bare um we're not to the point where we're reloading every year, but we, we are uh, to a point where we're not rebuilding something. Um, we had some great, you know, I took over the program from Tom Everett. Mm -hmm. uh, we had some great kids in there uh, with the support of, of Jeff Bryan, our, our athletic director. We've been able to, to bring it forward. Um, kids like Brennan Johnson, uh, who's our returning 126. State uh, qualifier. 
Christian Griffiths, who is our returning 106, uh, Kale, uh, Devin, Zach, uh, Josh. We have uh, several freshmen that um, we were able to get from the freshman football team with uh, Frank Caputo, mm -hmm. who's also actually another storied wrestling coach. Uh, uh, had coached at Rock Barn. He's he's been been around uh, football and wrestling for many many years, uh, and he's not even on the staff. And it's nice to have, you know right. the wrestling staff at least. Uh, yeah. It's nice to have his influence, and we've gotten a lot of kids from the uh, the, the football program. Yeah. What's Zach? Zach wrestling one thirty eight or yeah, one thirty eight. Yeah. Did, last year, Jason was at 38, so Zach went up 45 and was a smaller wrestler and did very, very That's well. That's what I thought. So, see, that could benefit him this season. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, uh, that seems to be a good little uh, area to zone in on as a first strength there for Noonan Wrestling and big shoes to, to fill. But, big shoes. Uh, yeah, you never can tell. You also got some girls on the program. Tell me about these, these girls. Uh, Taylor Price and Charlotte Kinsey um, are currently trying out for spots. Uh, we have Courtney Moore, also Jason Moore's sister. Um, who's done Team Georgia? She didn't do it this past year. Uh, she was working on some stuff this summer. But with us four years now. Uh, yes, this will be her fourth year. Uh, Charlotte Kinsey was with us last year, off and on. Uh, was not able to make the commitment uh, completely, and uh, but she did come back. Um, and Taylor Price uh, did our preseason stuff and and uh, went into several tournaments. And it just loves the sport. And she's a sophomore. She's she's really bought in. Charlotte's a junior, mm -hmm. uh, and Courtney's a senior. And of course, she's kind of blazed the trail for them. I like how you feel like these girls have a right to compete. If they want to come out for wrestling, they want to get on the mat. You don't deny it. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a male, born and raised in the South, and so you know I want to get out to protect them. But these girls are so tough. Mm -hmm. yeah. don't, they don't need so much protection. Uh, they're, they're pretty tough. A lot of times they're like, Coach, I got this. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty cool. I got about 45 seconds. Give me a name that's going to surprise people with the wrestling program this year. One of our kids? Yeah. Uh, Brennan Johnson. Okay. And what about you? I, I, I'll agree with Brennan Johnson. Uh, I think Josh Smith is also going to shock some people. Yeah. Is he also a uh, this is a, ret a returner and a Georgia a team Georgia wrestler also, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, about 160 or something. Uh, like he'll be to... going 60. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. And I know it's really cool that you guys work under administration with uh, Coach Bryant. I know that he's got your back. He yeah. does. He does. Uh, he's been supporting us. You know, when we've lost our room right now due to the uh, renovations sure. we're doing at Noonan High School, he's uh, doing his best that those renovations include. Uh, a new wrestling room for us uh, to support all the kids that we've got. Um, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter, you know, when I need the, the, the gym opened, uh, what we're trying to do, he's, he's trying to figure out a way that he can help us make it happen. I appreciate both of you coming in, doing the show with me. You guys come back as the season uh, develops, we get an update on the Cougars. Does that sound good? Yes, Absolutely. Sir. And uh, best of luck, stay healthy. <laughs> and that Coach Brian, he's a good fellow. He's a fellow Auburn Tiger. So, you know, uh, you know, you know, he's a good guy. Really enjoying my time with you guys. Thanks for coming Thank in. Thank you, Tony. Folks, that's all the time we have for talking with Tony today. Tune in next week. We'll welcome Major League Baseball player Cam Drogen right here to Talking with Tony.